Hi, good afternoon. It's uh, Neil Russell and Philip Roach. We're here in Nordhaven, Europe, uh, just uh, on our first ever web uh, interaction here with uh, any buyers that are out there or any owners uh, or anybody interested in Nordhaven's. Just let you all know that uh, Neil and I obviously work together, but because of COVID-19, we are still self-isolating. So um, Neil's in a, one of our satellite offices and um, I'm at home, to be honest. I don't have pictures normally of Nordhavens on the walls, but uh, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> we've just set this up to, so we can, we can, uh, we can talk together. Yeah, just somebody's put a question here about backup support that we offer. Um, it's a good question. Um, when uh, certainly with with the European side of the business, um, when Neil first came across from the US, um, Neil could talk about some of the history of that. But Neil set up Nordhaven Europe um, some sixteen years ago. Neil, uh, two thousand four, and I didn't have much more hair then than I do now. <laughs> But uh, you know, it was it, it was quite uh, it was quite a challenge. Neil sort of came across, set up the office, and it was a very much sort of suck it and see thing. But I think people quickly got to know the brand, uh, understand the concept, and um, it, the thing just uh, this really did take off. But the, I think the, the support thing was was very important. One from PAE have been able to to help us. They've been fantastic at doing that. Um, but also things like, um, you know, 16 years ago, 17 years ago, John Deere engines uh, really weren't well, well known at all here. Um, hardly in agriculture as well, never mind in, um, in marine. So, of course, we needed to have that backup and support from, from uh, manufacturer to, to make sure customers and buyers were, were happy to buy our brand with uh, unknown uh, quantities in, in, you know, in, within, within that. So that actually has worked out very well. So back up with support, if you have a problem with your boat, you basically phone Neil and I and we sort, we sort it, or at least try and put you, if, if our boats never stand still. So it's never a question of having somebody at the end of a marina or a pontoon who necessarily knows about your boats, but having the backup and support um, from us and from PA has, has meant that our very reliable boats anyway, when things do go slightly awry, we can get things sorted in, in super quick time. And the backup we have with um, things like um, stabilizers, we, we, we pretty much only use track now. We've used other manufacturers in the past, but track, the backup and service has been fantastic. I was bringing a brokerage boat down from Scotland um, not too far before lockdown, and um, our stabilizers just suddenly stopped working. And... I was with a, I was with a, a, an owner who was helping me bring the boat down, and uh, from Scotland, and uh, he basically phoned the U.S. He phoned Ernie Romero, he phoned his home number, um, and he was immediately able to put us onto the tech guys who were able to fix it by putting different codes into the into the system, and uh, fixed it there and then in the middle of the RC. So, having having product on board where you do get that backup is 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 fantastic. So. We, Neil and I, we have a we have a team um, run by Richard O'Connor, our service and commissioning manager, um, and they're out helping owners with uh, servicing, sourcing parts. Sandy in the office is just the best at uh, helping um, owners source parts and bits and pieces that they need. So, yeah, we we, we offer as as much backup as we possibly can. We're not just a sales outfit. Indeed. We've got a question here about what type of training do you do with the buyers i mean we whether it's brokerage or new boats we uh to the best of our abilities we we do a full training uh on uh the boat ownership one thing we do steer clear of is uh you know, training for navigation and that sort of thing we that's really down to the to the buyer or the new owner to uh for him to become um comfortable um but we will offer and we do offer training um, in all aspects of the boat. Um, quite often uh, it gets to the point where the owner almost not quite kicks us off the boat, but um, uh, we are um, we know when we're they feel they, they're confident enough to take the boat out on their own, which is great. Um, sometimes their confidence can be a, 
um, uh, uh, slightly enlarged in their own opinion. <coughs> Sorry, I say that uh, until they, <laughs> until they, until they get out there. But you know what? The best best way of training is getting out there using the boat. And and if a, if an owner has the confidence and the, the uh, qualifications to take the boat out from a navigational point of view, getting out there using it is the best way to learn. So we do, yeah, as much training as the buyer buyers want. Um, another question here about: uh, Do you recommend a survey on a new hull delivery? Um, out of uh, the all the new hulls that have come into Europe, which are I, I, I'm not precise figures, but we're probably looking at heading towards seventy new hulls that we've North Haven Europe has sold into into and around Europe. Uh, not one of them have had a uh, a whole survey, and frankly, we would uh, probably be a complete waste of time and money for for an owner to to, to spend. But uh, an owner has the um, uh, opportunity to put excuse me to put a surveyor on board if he wants to. But it, it wouldn't be something that we'd we'd recommend. Um, I mean. The what better better still go to the yards yourself the the the, the probably the best thing about buying a brand new nordhaven is the build process um and actually getting out to the yards uh, whether that be um doshing um or south coast marine in, in in mainland china to actually see the boats in production and see the the work teams out there doing their thing it's uh, it's pretty inspiring frankly um much has changed in that part of the world over the last 15 years. I mean, from my first trip to when I was out there last, I was out there just before the, the COVID outbreak. Right. Um, things have changed massively, but the one thing that hasn't changed is just the talent and the, the skill set that's, that's, uh, that we have at those yards. And going out there and seeing your boat in various stages of production, um, it gives you a very, very good feeling that's, that you've made the right decision. Um, everything's done on site. You know, logs come in at one end of the factory, um, resin comes in, and at the other end of the factory, a brand new boat comes out, and uh, they do everything in house. It's um, it's 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 amazing to go and see. I certainly highly recommend it. Yeah, so do I. Uh, in your service department, do you recommend the yearly services and what needs doing? That's uh, quite a big subject. Uh, we do we do have a we do have a. Um, a service department we actually have uh some uh, really rather nice um workshops uh which are uh utilized uh and and just below us at our sales office at tamble point marina um well, we offer pretty much anything so whether it's car glass uh engineering um and, and just general service so uh what, what what we have done, we've done obviously new, numerous uh, heating systems, whether that's Robusto, Hurricane, uh, Epis Backup, what, you know, anything you want, we can do. Um, we've refitted air conditioning units. Uh, we've had 86s in here, for example, uh, having some work done um, and some fairly major work uh, right down to the to the 40s as well. And we have a steady flow of, uh, of Nordhavens coming by, whether it's a yearly um, service work, um, not necessarily the, the case, uh, but it's certainly every few years we see um, the same boats coming by uh, for, for general service and, and upgrades. Um, on the smaller boats, what we tend to find now with the electronic um, uh, technology certainly as regards uh, thrusters that a lot of these boats coming back in maybe upgrading the thruster putting in proportional proportional controls on the thruster systems for the electric boats which is uh, really quite a nice thing to do uh, and um, you know, we then uh, do the general service as well uh, we do travel quite far afield um, our department uh, Richard and uh, and his colleagues were down in um, where were they? There, Italy, Bari in Italy last summer, about this time last summer, summer down there for six weeks, uh, working on two Nordham 47s. Um, uh, it was everything from, I think, a heater system through to thruster uh, upgrades with a proportional control to general service. We did, actually did two muffler uh, silencer changes, um, engine service, etc. 
uh, even right down to taking a, you know, a new tender down in a van and fitting that and bringing the old one back. So uh, we will travel wherever we need to go. Um, one of the 40, 43s that Phil mentioned earlier on that we sold during lockdown, uh, we're going out to uh, fit a, a, a diesel heating system on that boat, uh, potentially doing some thrust of controls there, muffler change, and actually we're doing some um, a gel coat uh, uh, buffing and polishing as well. So um, yeah, we're, we're yeah, that's where, where's that for? That's in uh, Denmark. So um, our our house in in Denmark with the, the boats is. Um, we were fortunate enough to get this boat sold during during lockdown, and um, I just mentioned it briefly earlier. But the the uh, the German seller and the the Danish buyer um, just were very understanding with each other, and uh, it made the sale a, it was a delight. And the boat um, boat was actually sold pre pre survey. Um, but there was some really good understanding that everything was going to be done and fitted and, and all the rest of it. And Neil and I have obviously jumped in to help with that. And Richard and the team will go out to the boat and spend some time out with with uh, with the new owner, um, fitting the bits and pieces. Um, yeah. So just a quick question coming here, Neil. Um, how much prior boating experience does someone need to have before being able to successfully operate a Norhaven? Talk about training for, but what if someone's still uncomfortable? And um, that's a really good question. And, and uh, frankly... As Neil mentioned just a, little, a few minutes ago, uh, we have owners that have owned many, many boats. That tends to be the, we tend to sell boats to more experienced people. That they've, they've maybe had the fast boats. They wanted, they wanted to go exploring. They, want, they don't want to run out of fuel after 200 miles, that kind of thing. So we get a lot of people who have owned boats, but we have sold, I mean, we've sold several boats and quite big boats to people who've never, never been on the water before. And um, in fact, Leading back to what we were saying earlier about the 55 and the 60s, we had sort of one of the very last 55s come in and one of the first 60s come in together. Neil and I spent um, lots of time um, teaching about the systems on board, doing the, the, the bumps and turns, as we call it, where we take the boats out and get people to be able to dock the boats, take them off the dock, put them back on the dock as efficiently as possible. And um, both... Both buyers took to it very, very quickly, particularly after, say, um, the, the 55 owner, um, Robin, not to mention names, Robin came from a sort of an industrial background. So he had, he was used to big plant machinery and um, uh, he, he got his head around it very quickly. And um, I'll never forget, we were actually out on the 60, which we were checking, so we were, this was during commissioning, we were checking exhaust systems. Uh, we were putting temperature sensors into the exhaust and uh, suddenly the radio pips up and it's it's Robin um, calling me on the, on the VHF. And I said, Robin, we're into the right channel. Robin, where are you? And he goes, I'm out on the boat. And he just he just taken off the dock. He had, I've got to say, we had handled the boat over. But he just decided he was going to go out and uh, he'd taken the boat off the dock. And we're very tidal around, around the south coast of England. And uh, as I was bringing the 60 back in, he's following me in his 55 and... The tide was properly ripping out. We're talking four knots past past uh, where we're going to park. So we parked up at 60 and Robin, I, my heart was in my mouth as he's on the flybridge looking down saying, am I doing this right? As he brought the boat in beautifully in this four knots of, of tide underneath him. But yeah, yeah. it's. Um, I think sometimes not having, not, not have, just going into it sort of semi-blind can often be, that you don't get the nerves then. But yeah, we, we sell we sell boats to to a whole range. The important bit is is that you know we sit we sit with the owners and, and make sure that everything's okay. On Robin's particular boat, it ended up on the east coast of the UK. I went up and helped him with his first oil change, um, uh, a filter change, just to just to be there, just to give a bit of instruction. So you know, it's it's we're fully involved with this, and you know, if Neil and I don't know uh, how to do it, we know somebody who does. And uh, we've got a we've got a big support network. Whether it might not necessarily work directly for Nordhaven Europe, uh, but we have a lot of very very skilled third parties that we can bring in at any time. So yeah, the the training and the, the previous boating experience, um, you know, it's not necessary. We can we can take you through most things. We haven't spoken about it yet, but I'm sure somebody will ask a question about the the Nordhaven Owners Group and you know how how that's structured. We have a we have a very, very active forum um, of owners talking to each other, discussing things, 
coming up with ideas or problems, uh, solutions to problems, that kind of thing. We probably get maybe poof, on a on a bad day, 10, on a good day, 25, 30 emails um, posted, posted by owners. And within that, there's also subsets. So uh, plenty of owners get together. We've got a lot of European owners that have sort of to gang up um but you know they'll 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 swap information even things like buying parts they'll they'll buy they'll buy block parts and um, share amongst each other so it's 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 a very it's a very friendly um active um owners group um with obviously a loss in common and a lot to share and that that forum is as is phenomenal it's not just owners we we also have we're you know we have PA representatives in it, all the sales guys you are in it. Um, the project managers, <clears throat> Dan, Dan's on it a fair amount as well. And we also have experts, so people like um, Ernie Romero from Track will, will jump in there. Probably, uh, probably the most active person is a chap called Bob Center, Lugger Bob, as he's he's re- referred to as. Um, Bob Center uh, works with with with. Uh, Alaska Diesel, um, who are supplying all the lugger engines, Northern Light generators, and he is. What he doesn't know is, uh, it's, I can't describe just how the knowledge of this guy and how much he's helped our owners. He's always online. He's he will reply night and day to people with problems, and he's been a huge huge source for for owners and us alike. And um, you know, having that backup and support is is just it really does help. And I don't think there's really anybody or brand that has that sort of uh, behind the scenes thing happening with with their particular product. 